Hello everyone, and welcome to Nautical Academy. In today's video, we delve into the concept of the angle of law, exploring its definition, underlying causes, and differentiating factors when compared to the angle of list. Additionally, we examine the necessary corrective measures to address and mitigate the effects of the angle of law. In my previous video, I have shown various stability conditions of the ships. Those are stable, unstable, and neutral conditions. In this video, I will show you the effect of unstable conditions on ship stability, leading to a neutral state, which will result in one of the dangerous scenarios in ship stability, the angle of law. Angle of law refers to the angle at which a vessel will come to rest if she is floating in still water when she is heeled over to either port or starboard. But before I go deeper into the concept of angle of law, let me discuss first, how to locate the metacenter, and the ship's center of gravity since their locations are crucial to ship stability. For a stable ship, where the metacenter is above the ship's center of gravity, when she is healed by external forces such as wind and waves, the ship's center of buoyancy will move at the low side, and the vertical upward force acting on the ship's center of buoyancy separates from the vertical downward force acting on the ship's center of gravity. At a small angle of heel, the metacenter, M, can be found directly above the ship's center of buoyancy, along the buoyancy force intersecting the ship's centerline. When we say small angle of heel, it is when the ship is tilted by some external forces at 10 degrees or lesser, but others consider it at 15 degrees or lesser. When a ship heels further, at a large angle of heel, let's say 20 degrees, the center of buoyancy will have to move further out at the low side, and the buoyancy force can no longer be considered to act vertically upward through the initial metacenter or M. This causes the metacenter to move at larger angles of heel which is termed as prometacenter, or the moving metacenter. The actual location of the metacenter above the keel at large angle of heel can be found by calculating the ship's stability using this formula. Where Km is the vertical distance of the metacenter above the keel. Kb is the vertical distance of the ship's center of buoyancy above the keel. BM is the vertical distance of the metacenter above the center of buoyancy. You can also use this formula to find the KM if the ship is in stable condition, where KG is the vertical distance of the ship's center of gravity above the keel, and GM is the metacentric height. But on board, we can determine the vertical distance of the metacenter above the keel or KM value by extracting it from the ship's hydrostatic table provided by the ship's builder. This is a hydrostatic table. To use this, first, we need to determine the ship's mean draft, then find the ship's draft in the first column. You can extract the value of Km in this column. Here you can see the Km with letter T, where T means transverse. These values are the vertical distance of the metacenter or M above the keel for a ship's present draft, which is in meter. Let's say the ship's present mean draft is this one. The corresponding KM value for her present draft will be this one. You can also extract the value of KB in this column. The location of the ship's center of gravity, G, is always calculated depending on the ship's loading conditions, where the location can be found vertically above the keel known as KG, measured also in meters. This is the formula to calculate the KG, where moments is the total vertical moments, and W is the ship's final displacement. If we can find the following values, we will just subtract Kg from Km to find the initial metacentric height known as Gm. I have made a separate video on how to calculate the final Kg in Gm, kindly check the link in the description. The ship at an angle of law means that she is in an unstable condition. The ship's center of gravity, G, is above metacenter, M, where Kg is greater than Km, so the metacentric height or Gm is negative. Let us take a look at the stable and unstable conditions. This is the stable condition, 
where the metacenter is above the center of gravity. And this is the unstable condition, where the ship's center of gravity is above metacenter. When they are healed by external forces to some angle, as the weight force and buoyancy force got separated, a riding lever or riding arm was created known as GZ. GZ or riding lever is the horizontal distance between the center of gravity, G, and the vertical line of action of buoyancy force. If moments are taken about the ship's center of gravity, G, in stable condition, there is a moment to return the ship to an upright position, since the riding lever was created on the low side. The weight force acts vertically downward on the high side, while the buoyancy force acts vertically upward on the low side, creating a moment that will bring the ship in upright position. This moment is called a moment of statical stability, known as the riding moment. In unstable conditions, when the ship is healed at some angle, a capsizing lever is created at the high side of the ship. The weight force acts vertically downward through the center of gravity at the low side, while the buoyancy force acts vertically upward at the high side through the center of buoyancy, creating a moment that will tend the ship to heal further. This moment is called a capsizing moment. But this moment will not capsize the ship, it will only tend to heal the ship further until the ship's center of buoyancy is directly above the ship's center of gravity. In this state, the ship now is in neutral condition. Assuming that the ship is floating in still water without any external forces, she will remain in this position since no riding lever or capsizing lever exists. If there is no riding or capsizing lever, there is no moment that will bring back the ship to her upright position or no moment that would tend to heal her further. To determine the riding moment, it is GZ times ship displacement. In this case, the riding lever or GZ is zero, so the riding moment is also zero. That is why the ship will remain in this position if there are no external forces are applied. Now, the angle formed between the vertical line of force and the ship center line is called the angle of lull. If the ship is healed further beyond the angle of lull by some external forces, the center of buoyancy moves further at the low side, creating a riding lever and riding moment that will bring back the ship at an angle of lull. If no external forces exist, she will come to rest at an angle of lull, not in an upright condition. In this condition, we can see that the ship will oscillate about the angle of lull. This is the formula to calculate the angle of lull. Where theta is the angle of lull, gm is the negative initial metacentric height, and bm is the bm when the ship is upright. To calculate the riding lever or GZ at small angle of heel, this is the formula. For the large angle of heel, we will use the wall-sided formula to determine the riding lever. I will make a separate video on how to calculate the angle of lull and the riding lever at small and large angle of heel. At first glance, it seems that the ship is listing. But angle of lull is different from list. Let us compare these two conditions. List refers to the condition in which a vessel leans or tilts to one side, typically due to uneven distribution of weight or shifting cargo on board. Let's say, the ship is in stable condition, and we will add a weight to this side. The ship center of gravity will move towards the center of gravity of the weight being loaded. The new center of gravity is at G1, in which it is off the center line. As a result, the ship is listing to where the new G is off the centerline. While at angle off lull, the ship's center of gravity is along the centerline, it is a result when the ship is in unstable condition. At an angle of lull, the ship may flop to either side, she will be heeled to starboard and will rest if there are no external forces exist. But if some external forces bring her to the other side, then she will heal to the other side and will remain in this condition if no external forces are applied. The ship will oscillate about the angle of lull, instead of her upright position. So the angle of lull may occur either on port or starboard, depending on the direction of the external forces. While enlisting, the ship will only list to one side, 
towards the side where the ship's center of gravity is off the centerline. List is easy to correct compared to the angle of lull. In this case, we can add weight to the other side until the ship's center of gravity is along the centerline. Be sure that by doing these, you have calculated the ship's kg since adding weight above the ship's center of gravity, the ship's g will rise. But for the angle of lull, you cannot do this. Adding weight on the high side when the ship is at angle of lull will worsen the situation. Let's say, we add a weight here. If she is heeled to the other side, supposed to be she will rest at an angle of lull. But since you have added weight on this side, the new position of ship center of gravity will be off the center line, causing the ship to heel further. Now you have two serious problems, the angle of lull still exists, and at the same time, the position of the ship center of gravity is off the center line. Calculations on the ship's stability are done before departure and anticipated arrival for the safety of the ship's entire voyage. But during the course of voyage, the ship's stability should be closely monitored as the angle of lull situation may arise. Here are several reasons that can cause the ship's center of gravity to rise above the metacenter during the course of voyage. Fuel and freshwater consumption, and their free surface effects. The effect of fuel and water consumption is a discharge of weight. If the tanks are below the ship's G, this will cause a rise in the ship's center of gravity, and an additional effect is the introduction of free surfaces due to tanks becoming partially filled. Next, ships carrying timber deck cargoes. This type of cargo absorbs moisture that will cause the ship's G to rise. A 15% allowance for the weight of the timber should be made when carried on deck in conducting stability calculations. Next is the ice accretion on deck. Sailing in higher latitudes usually encounters snowstorms, which will result in the accretion of ice on the deck, resulting in the rise of the ship's G above the metacenter. Another is the shift of the bulk cargo. The vertical component of a shift of solid bulk cargo may be enough to cause a rise in the ship's center of gravity. How to correct the angle of lull? First, determine whether it is an angle of lull or list. If you are not sure which of the two, then it is better to assume that it is an angle of lull. Take action to reduce the ship's kg by lowering the ship's center of gravity below the metacenter. If you have a wing tank which is full of ballast, emptied it by discharging first the ballast on the high side. When it is emptied, then discharge the ballast on the low side. Another way to lower the ship's G is through ballasting. Select a subdivided double bottom tank and fill it with ballast water in this sequence. If it is divided into three compartments, start filling the tank on the low side. When the tank on the low side is completely full, start filling the center tank. If the center tank is full, fill the third tank which is on the high side. If all tanks are completely full, and the ship's center of gravity is below the metacenter, the ship will return to its upright condition. Another way to correct the angle of lull is to reduce the effect of free surfaces due to slack tank. Identify the slack tank below the ship's G and start topping up. This means filling those tanks until it is completely full to reduce the virtual rise of the ship's center of gravity. I have made a separate video about the free surface effect of the slack tank that can cause a virtual rise of the ship's center of gravity, kindly check the link in the description. That's all for now guys, do not forget to like and share this video, and if you are new to this channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Bye.